Greetings, dear ones. I'm Crying of Magnetic Service. Yesterday I started a message. I would like to repeat a portion of it and expand it. It has to do with the eternal question that stands above anything that has been taught this day. It's a beautiful question and it's one that you don't ask enough. And even before we tell you what the question is, we have to ask you, are you aware? Truly aware of the forces around you? Are you aware of the, of the tug of yin and yang? <coughs> Why is it, light worker, that it seems that you've been pushing a boulder uphill so much of your life and especially lately? It goes beyond any of the channeling that we have given you. In the past two years, we've, we've told you so many things about the shift that is going on. We've given you information about the, the recalibration and what it's like to, to tune to another station, so to speak. We talked to the healers, the meditators, the channelers. And we've told all of them that the energy that they've been used to is no longer going to happen. We've told you just lately there is no such thing as returning to the way it was. A week ago we told you that normal will never be normal. And that each day you may awaken with a parameter you didn't expect because the new normal, if there is such a thing, will be a road that never ends, constant change. We told you that the new human being will not just get used to it, they will expect it because with the change will come new things. And the new things will always be better than the day before. Now that's a metaphor. When we say the day before, we may mean the year before, the generation before, even the lifetime before, but things will move off the peg of normalcy. I'm giving you all of the information about the timeline of human history and where it's going and where you've come from. We've, we told you that Crying is here because of what you did. There are so many who ask, who is crying? And that is the most difficult thing I can ever answer. Because you don't even see who I am. You don't see you and me, do you? You relate to the messages. You sit, perhaps, and you feel the love, but you don't look and see that there is a creative source that I represent that you're in. You don't see you and me because you isolate and you separate. You put names on things, faces on things, personalities on things, and you keep them separate. Human nature wants to follow a leader. If they're important, you just love to surround them. The old paradigms of management, somebody's always in charge. What if I told you that none of these paradigms are going to exist in the future? What if I told you there's no channeling in the future? What if I told you you reach a consciousness state where all of you don't think alike, but you know alike, you know what to do? Can you imagine a factory where every single worker always knew what to do? 
without direction or management? Do you realize that might be possible if they were all hooked together in a way of all knowing? Oh, they keep their personalities. And they'd all be different and unique, but they'd all know together. What about a planet that all knows together? That you don't kill each other. That sees the God inside everyone else. Who gets along. Now we've told you these many things and yet we still haven't. We really haven't visited the main point lately. And so it's time to revisit dear ones really revisit the core to everything I don't want you to lose track of this who are you I mean the big who we talk about all manner of attributes Sometimes synchronicity, sometimes co-creation, sometimes meditation. They're attributes of the human being. They're part of the soul group and the human group, the Gaia group. But the one that is missing that we really haven't discussed and talked about, not that much, is one that cannot be explained it's who are you? The big who. How would you describe, dear ones, the higher self? And what is it to you? Is it elusive? How many of you see it as yourself? Actually, that is tough. And for those of you who do, do see it as yourself, how many of you question, who are you? The truth of the matter is, dear human being, that you are derivatives from the central source, that which is God. And although we have said that you have star seeds, each one of you, those star seeds are multiple, that is to say that there is Pleiadian, and before that, the seeds of the Octorians, the seeds of the Orion. So much of it collected and helped, protected by the Ashtar. So many groups are part of you. But they were once corporeal, all of them. That's not what I'm talking about. What's the core? What is the core? And in order for you to truly see this, what is inside of you truly that represents that which is talking to you now and that is experientially available through the pineal, who are you? And we go right back to this. When we first started talking to you, the channeling in the beginning, we used things that were metaphors and yet they were not. We started talking to you about the physics of love. There's an energy on the planet that you cannot deny exists, which has no explanation, which has no rules, but it is packed with emotion and it's love. Mother, that first time you see the child, you hold it to your chest. It's come right out of your body. The umbilical has been cut. And if you're lucky, the child looks in your eyes. And there's the connection. And the connection is forever. Can you deny the emotions that are there? 
And how do you think about that child, that baby right now? Do you realize that that cord is never cut? How do you explain that, physicist? Is it energy or is it not energy? Is emotion energy? Is something that is forever dismissed by, by humanity as just an emotion? Or could there be physics behind it? And if there could be, what is it? Twenty years ago, we said this to you. Twenty years. That the space between the nucleus and the electron haze of atomic structure was filled with the physics of love. And there were some who thought, oh, how sweet that is. Brian makes our, our heart flutter when we think of these things. There was no heart flutter involved. It's physics. And this is what we want you to understand. Where are you from? What is home? And what is that connection? And who are you? And now it's time to revisit that which you need to hear. You are filled with a source that is grander than grand that is pure than pure. And as you proceed to the evolution of human consciousness, this is going to go nowhere unless you truly revisit this over and over and over. And that is to say that at the core of everything, there's love. And you begin to draw the connections between human and human and human and realize that there's love connection between all of you, if you'll allow it. Who is it you won't love? We better think about that. Because the new human being will see the connections in everyone. The ability to love the unlovable is simply evolution. Conscious evolution, spiritual evolution. It brings the earth together in a way you don't expect. When you can look at someone else, no matter what they're doing, and what you want to do is pour your heart out to them and help them. Not accuse them and not to judge them. That's new, isn't it? You've got to understand the source. When you saw it in the masters who walked this planet, when the, when the very flowers of the earth would bloom, where they walked and the animals would follow them, and what do you think that is? What you, you think that's sweet? Or do you think there might be something there that's beyond understanding? that you can measure that's the physics of the creative source and it's in you. The higher your DNA operates, the more love will be in the cells of your body and that's the love of the creator. It's not the love of self and yet we tell you, dear human being, that you have got to learn to love this part of you. You've got to look at yourself in the eyes and love it. The whole process that we have been talking about for 25 years of consciousness changing that which is in your body has an extra compliment, and you should know what it is. You've got to love yourself in the process and mean it. If you don't do that, then you're only giving halfway. It's hard. There's so much old energy that you've had to slog through, old soul, light worker, and we were there the whole time. All of the issues and all of the problems and all of the frustrations. Love is the glue of solution. It's the glue of solution. Can you love the problem? <laughs> Can you love the situation even though it isn't, it isn't what you want yet? It's not resolved yet. It's in the process. 
of being created. But human beings have a tendency to to do cause and effect, and anything between is not (laughs) acceptable. You can't even see yourself evolving. If you don't have the final solution, therefore you don't have any solution, not understanding the beauty of what you have. None of you are home, dear ones. None of you are home. You're on earth. You're working. Do you know that? You do. Re- you realize that, don't you? You know where home is? It's where I'm from. It's where you're from. It's where we're all from. I want to tell you this, that when you're with me and there is the purity, a sonority of love, a confluence a purity that you cannot even fathom or imagine, that's where you're from. And that's the part that wants to connect to you, and that's the love that you're looking for. If you can put a name to it or a situation to it, it's the part of you that wants to reconnect to the part of you. It's the part of you on the other side of the veil that misses the part of you that literally is blind to that part. You have awakened to the possibility that there's more to you than meets the eye. And so many have not. They look around. They don't believe it. They just want to see what they want to see and move on. And they're pleased with it. And there's no judgment of any of them. But the old soul awakens to what they remember. And that is that in you, there is the Creator. If I could tell you about home, you wonder why you ever leave. And you do. At the wind of birth, when part of you split out and come to this planet, I will tell you what the rest of you does. It sits there and waits for you to connect. Did you know that? Can you imagine? We've said it before. Can you imagine being split from your loved ones? And not knowing if you'll ever hear from them again. And yet the veil is paper thin for you. You can see them walking around and you're always saying, look at me. Look this way. Maybe you'll you'll glimpse me. And they never do. But when when some of them do, you know know what that connection feels like? I'm talking to those of you right now who have felt this. You've awakened to the point where you've looked up and were there. The hand comes down and says, what took you so long? That's home talking to you. The big H. It's where you belong. It's where you always have been. Eons before this galaxy was ever here. Through other universes, the creative source has existed and you've been part of it. You're old. (laughs) And at the same time, you're new because time is in a circle. Never ends. Never ends. The circle has no beginning or an end, and that's who you always have been. That's home. Love is pure. Then you can believe. Without any judgment and agendas, so pure. It's what you always always wanted it to be. It's what you dream it should be. That's who you are. That's the who. I want to revisit this because you really need to understand that there is something going on here where you need to, you need to revisit the core. The energy of God that you want to touch is you. You are part of this so supremely. And if you don't go there and you don't understand it and you want to assign it to a higher power that is not you, you'll never make the connection. And it's so important that you make the connection. And I'll tell you why. The physics of love is profound. 
And when we started talking about dark and light on this planet, we tried to give you metaphors, axioms, laws that said light is active, dark is passive. The definition of dark is a, a attribute where there's no light. So darkness doesn't even exist. It's simply the absence of something that does exist, light. Now let me tell you something that I have not discussed freely with you before because it wasn't needed, but it is now because you're changing a paradigm that you should be aware of. Let me ask you, are you aware that the physics of consciousness right now on the planet allows for darkness to be active when it needs to be. Did you realize that there are energies that feed on fear? Did you know you can create them? Human beings have the power to create active darkness if they want to because they are very powerful. And some do. Now you got names for that. And there's a lot of names. And it's so interesting that you often assign those names to some kind of spiritual source. It's a fallen angel. It started there in the sky with a creative source, but it didn't do something right. So it fell from heaven, and now it's bad. Oh, how human of you. It's like a bad movie. And I want to tell you that did not happen. But you want to call them evil spirits and you want to call them demons and you want to assign darkness to them and you want to make them this and that. I want to give you some information you need to know. These are human generated and they're real. This planet has been open to these kinds of things because human, human nature has allowed it and human consciousness has allowed it. The darkness part of humanity has allowed it. And what is going to get rid of it is you falling in love with yourself. What is going to get rid of it is you falling in love with yourself and understanding the core. This is the core issue. Who are you? Where is home? When you drop into the core, what does it mean? The laws of conscious physics will not allow darkness in with a human being who is active in loving themselves. Disease will not invade the human being who is actively involved in loving themselves. Cellular structure will become more quantum with the human being who is actively involved in loving themselves. I could go on and on and on. I want you to conjure up something. In your imagination, I want you to see the darkest thing you can imagine, the most horrific thing you've ever seen in a movie. I want, you to, I want you to line up legions of demons as far as you can see them, and I want you to picture yourself alone about to walk through them. Now I want you to picture yourself as a ball of light, and the physics of the light that you have repels them as you walk. And as you walk and you touch them and you give them light, they morph and pretty soon the room is filled with life and there's not one of them left and there's no fear and they cannot feed on anything. And what you have done is to change the planet itself and the very fabric of existence. How about that? That's the way it works. If you were to ask a Pleiadian, did darkness exist on their planet and where did it come from? They would give you a list of things that are extinct. <laughs> Is it true, Cryon, that there are those from outside the Earth's influence that actually come here and feed on the fear of humanity? And the answer is yes, you knew that. And the reason we never had to tell you about that is because you weren't part of it. Not really, because you're a light worker, aren't you? Or are you? The planet is turning a corner. The consciousness of humanity is starting to accelerate in its wisdom and its intelligence. And these are the things you have to know. Lightworker, listen. 
Healer, listen, you can walk into this puzzle with this ball of light that you have that has to do with love and integrity and nothing is going to touch you. You can go to work into the darkest places and nothing is going to touch you. You can go and heal those who are diseased and nothing is going to touch you because of what you are generating from home. Imagine carrying a piece of home with you. It's time to wake up to the possibilities of the grandness and the magnificence of who you are. And when this starts to occur, everything starts to change. Everything starts to change. Self-worth, human being, old soul, starts to increase because you have the wisdom to see who you are. When you start to see what you can do, how you feel, how you can heal, how your life is starting to actually change, do you know what that does to self-worth? It increases it because you realize your value to the planet, to the universe, to the creative source. And you can glimpse a little bit of home. I want to close this by asking you, pleading with you to start glimpsing a little home. In your meditations, when you talk to your cells, I want you to remind them where they're from. The love of God is who you are. You are love. And none of the processes and none of the things that I told you about are going to work until there's an acknowledgement of this. It's going to change the planet to come a day when the negative things that you see right now on your news will never, just simply won't be there. Hundreds of years have taken place since you had marauding armies of conquerors and clashing with swords and shields and all of those things. You, you don't expect to turn on the news and see that that's coming, do you? Will there come a day when you turn on the news and you won't expect what you see today either? It's, it'll be that different. It'll be that different. The idea of humans killing each other on purpose for effect will be barbaric. You won't even see it as human. Because when you touch this planet with home, the planet starts to resound and others start to remember what you know. The grids of the earth start to resound with it. The planet is in transition, dear one. I want you to be an active part of the transition, old soul, and I want you to start loving yourself, and this is the message of the day. And when you do, there is a reciprocation that you won't believe. When you another, oh, listen, when you love a human being and they love you back, there's nothing like it, right? Can you imagine? reaching up and taking the hand of your higher self and feeling the reciprocation. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. And so it is. <laughs>